Okay, what is up, Duck Squad Quack, Danny Kim? David, welcome Dave. to another session of Duck, Duck Therapy, Therapy, episode two. I hope you liked the first one. If you didn't check it out, it's up here, so go check it out. And today we also have Sharon with us, as last time. Um, introduce yourself Introduce again. yourself. For <laughs> I'm a former health minister, and I'm a mental health advocate, and I do public speaking, I do uh, education, peer support, and offer online mental health communities. Awesome. So that we was will great. put down Sharon's profile and her info mm -hmm. in the description box. So go okay. check it out. And now on to our story. story. Okay. So there's uh, Daniela sent us a story and I'll just read it for you quickly. So hi, David, Danny. Hope you're doing well. My okay. name is Daniela and I live in the Dominican Republic. I've been a duck for a while now and really nice. enjoy your content. Thank I'm really you. thankful for what you're doing to help your viewers acknowledge the mental health issues. Uh, for the last two years of my life, I've been struggling with anxiety, sleep problems and self harm, even though it's hard to admit. But lately things are getting more intense than usual and it's getting harder and harder to manage. Four months have passed by and all I do is sleep all day when I come home from school. I can barely eat sometimes and every morning it's a trampling task to get out of bed and my self-harm issues are getting worse with the urges getting harder to suppress. Even though these problems are not a big deal, I can't help but feel numb. Like life is passing by and I'm just watching helplessly. Though I do contemplate the possibility of getting help, I believe it will actually make things worse. I don't want to worry my mother as she works very hard on her job, which stresses her in consequence. I think she won't see it as a serious thing, but rather an annoyance. She has expressed in the past how my misery bothers her, and to be honest, we don't have the best emotional relationship. My father, on the other hand, will dismiss it or make a big deal out of it. He has said in the past that depression is for weak people, and he will probably b blame me for being like this. I feel guilty for feeling like this way. I really don't have any severe events happening in my life. It seems rather normal. My problems aren't that severe, yet why am I struggling so bad? What do you think? Are these valid enough? reasons to go and seek help from a therapist or should I just take it step by step until it eventually goes away mm -hmm. thank you for listening which much love Daniela what do you think uh, I don't understand like your exact situation but you've described it as like as if nothing really special or like nothing really stressful is going on but it's just there it's like subtle it's just constant mm -hmm. and to be honest like I've been in those phases too like right. I've uh, felt very lethargic yeah that and like powerless disclaimer this is not professional advice this is just what I did and everyone Duh. else has their first of all we have different situations but uh, even though your parents did say that kind of stuff or they don't take depression very severely I th still think family is a very big uh, strength that is near you that you can get like a urgent or like a sincere um, uh, consultation or advice from so I think if you approach it in a very like sincere manner to your parents um, maybe talking to them might help but in Back to my case, in my case, like, um, I know it's very hard to get out of um, bed and stuff, but uh, I tried, so this is very, you know, shallow level. I, I'm very uncomfortable because Sharon's li yeah. <laughs> listening right now. <laughs> we have an expert professional yeah, an expert. here, <clears throat> and then two dudes who know yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But like in my case, in my case, if you don't feel like going out or whatever, yes. I, st I started out with what you can do at home. Like for example, and just entertaining myself or relaxing myself with books or I don't know, just even Netflix or some TV shows. Uh, just like getting your mind off of like that state like and get yourself into a better mood yeah. and then it's like a snowballing effect for me uh then i got like oh i'm seeing funny stuff i'm feeling a little bit better maybe i should go outside and take a walk with my dog or something like that and meet a little bit uh friends and stuff for me it was like those small steps that happened in home and i got to get better like okay. um, very gradually well, it was slow but very gradually i beg to differ actually yeah okay um, so first of all, I, I think thinking that every family is well functioning and their parents will care about um, their kids' mental health is a little bit of a generalization. Um, I'm not saying your parents are like that, but if you believe that your parents do not really care or think that depression is for weak people, well then I, I don't think telling them um, would be the easiest thing to do. Um, and I, honestly, like, you know, I've, I've had therapy and I've taken medication. I didn't tell any of my parents any of that. And I totally understand where you are. And I think 
you can get better even without telling your parents. I think just go to therapy. I, that that you should do. I think, but you don't have to tell your parents about it. I feel that's totally fine and that's totally natural. And regarding your unenergetic state, I've totally been there. Um, and for me, what helped is not entertaining myself, but more like trying to do small things, small successes in your everyday life. For example, once you get out of bed, well, first of all, getting out of your bed is already a success. So take that as a success. And then second, um, make your bed. I think that really helped me a lot, making your bed, because now, like just in the matter of 10 minutes after you woke up, um, you have made two successes. You first of all got out of bed and then second you made your bed. So those little successes help you gain confidence and help you gain self-esteem um, for you to be uh, motivated enough and have that momentum to take you throughout the day. I feel like entertaining yourself is great sometimes, but what it did to me watching Netflix is make me even more depressed because it makes me feel like even a bigger loser like I'm, I'm just like lying in bed watching Netflix all day that doesn't make me feel any better than I did before so personally um, I would take try to make your bed try to take a shower like brushing your teeth actually brushing your teeth is really really a, a big win like when I was like not in a good mood I never brush my teeth I smell like shit <laughs> right okay yeah <laughs> so brush your teeth make your bed that's that is a win. Take that as a win. Take small wins and small wins eventually make a big win. Yes. So I can agree that we are very different people here. Yeah. We <laughs> have very different methods on coping with this because in the first place, like I think Danny's advice is excellent. But in my case, it okay. wouldn't apply because I already make my bed and I already brush my right. teeth every oh, day. Oh, so, you already do that. So it's oh, like, wow. well, you're winning. But you're I, winning then. But I, and I also agree to therapy right. as well. If you have like, you writing this letter as time. actually a win. I would have never written mm. a letter to some random ass Korean dudes on the internet. <laughs> So honestly, like this is already, you already taking some action. So let's take that as a win and let's take that momentum further. And, and now we'll, let's hear from an expert. <laughs> actual expert. First of all, yes, you guys said there's some really good things there about the idea of baby steps. One of the analogies that uh, gets used in mental health is the idea of spoons, spoons as currency. How many spoons do you have? And right. when you are going through something like she's talking about anxiety problems with sleep and self-harm, if you say the average healthy person gets 12 spoons a day and most activities that you do through the course of the day, getting up, going, getting ready for work, that's a spoon. Uh, maybe attending school, that's a spoon. You usually get through the day and you maybe even have a spoon or two left. When you're in a place where you're not in a good state, you might only wake up with five or six spoons, but suddenly brushing your teeth is a spoon. And your morning rituals to get, you know, again, would have normally been a spoon are four, but you've only got six. Mm -hmm. So that idea of breaking things down into small victories, that's definitely important. Um, from the perspective of hearing about the anxiety, the sleep issues and the self-harm and the only sleeping and no appetite and that feeling of numbness that again can be part of things associated with depression again been there done that and actually the numbness and the self-harm are often connected a lot of times when we engage in self-harm it's actually to feel something it's you literally feel so overwhelmed and numb you feel that you actually have to do something to check to make sure that your nerve endings are actually working that you can feel something for some other folks self-harm is actually about feeling so much for example something like cutting that's literally letting out whatever it is you're feeling you're feeling like it's a release so in terms of things like monitoring self-harm uh, there's a wonderful app and it's called calm harm and it's a free app it's c-a-l-m-h-a-r-m it's a free app, it's downloadable, and it's got activities that you can do to help monitor and regulate and dial back that urge for things like the anxiety, that numbness, that not getting out of bed. Again, mm -hmm. there are those cycles that happen. And it was interesting how you both mentioned different things, like so the idea of either entertaining yourself or sitting in front of Netflix is gonna keep you there like longer and you don't feel good. It's in the moment. Both can be good. Watching something funny, but there's a difference between watching one funny show and eight hours of binging. One right. funny show might change your mindset, uh -huh. get you kind of thinking a little bit differently, ride that high, and again, and go make your bed, brush your teeth, whatever the thing is where you can score the wins. Right. Um, 
that's really important. And then the other part too, as far as family, family is a mixed thing and we're at a time and place right now where more people are choosing to deal with their mental health, but they come from families where it's been generations that we don't talk about that. Right. Um, I know within my own family, there are family members that I have literally lost contact with because I chose to go public with my mental health and to be open about it and to talk about it frankly. And they think that brings shame on the family. So you have to navigate your own family differently. If you do have access to services, do seek out something from your uh, primary care provider, whether that's a family doctor, a uh, nurse at a local clinic. Don't be afraid to check those things out. There's a lot of things that you can access publicly without your family knowing. And another app uh, is MindShift. It's a free app and so it allows you to check in and talk about how you're feeling and based on how you answer different questions and little emojis that you, you click on, it'll give you suggestions for breathing exercises, for checking in on how you're feeling. And again, that can be a place where you can score little wins. Always try to find a way, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Even reaching out with a letter like this and seeking some advice, even if it's informal, um, is always a great place to start. So I really wanna, wanna thank you for having written and I hope that the things that we've shared with you today um, help you and help some of the other ducks that are watching. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Like, honestly, much more wow. resourceful than we are. <laughs> <laughs> hope that helped you guys. Uh, hope that helped you, Daniela. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna send in your stories for us to talk about, um, please go to this email address down below. And also, Sharon has a online community, right? What is that? Yeah, my website, speakup.co. There are three different online communities that I've started. One is for a sort of generic kind of anybody just wants to empower their mental health. I'll talk about tools. And there are weekly meetings as well as access to tools that I'm putting on the website that a monthly membership gets you. And then there are two that are more fandom inspired. And one is uh, the Embrace Your Superpowers. And it's a Marvel themed superhero reframing of mental health issues and mental health tools that are done in that kind of a theme. And then there's also the K-pop um, BTS inspired Bulletproof to Stigma. So mm -hmm. if there's any ARMY fans or other K-pop stands out there, this might be the, the community. We will we'll use awesome. those kinds of references um, to talk about our mental health. So go check out speakup.co, speak-up.co. And thank you again, Sharon, for joining us and helping us become more of a professional and resourceful show. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.